Well, good. And when you look at the display landscape, it, it's almost remarkable, almost counterintuitive how quickly display is growing. The, the stats that, uh, that Randall gave earlier, especially given the, the massive proliferation of, of, of companies that are attempting to address little bits, but to Joe's point earlier, adding a fourth and a fifth layer to the ad call. And it sort of feels like a an overly complex system uh, is going to have trouble continuing to scale. I'd be curious in the panel's uh, viewpoint, to what extent we're going to have to have consolidation in the display ecosystem for that business to continue to, uh, to grow at the pace it's growing? I mean, I see it happening every day. I mean, as a result, obviously agencies you know, we still do business not on our buy side business with the collective platform across display and video. You know, 90% still comes from the leading agency planning and buying, you know, ecosystem at the moment. But we started talking more to advertisers directly just to get a gauge on their level of sophistication and education. There's still a huge gap. I mean, we think what we know, our expertise, our knowledge about how this business works has made its way to kind of CMOs and even heads of digital marketing at the, at the client side, but I don't think it's even gotten to that point right now. And as we've started making some inroads there and start communicating kind of how this is working, how DSPs play a role. What's the difference between a DSP and an ad network? What's the difference between a DSP and an ad exchange? What's the difference between an ad exchange and a DMP? They're like, you know, their heads are spinning, and they're, but at the end of the day, what these clients want is a scalable, efficient way to buy audiences that make sense and perform on whatever metric that they care about and that just screams for consolidation, screams for efficiency. I mean, I haven't quoted them the fourth and fifth party ad sorting conundrum because it actually doesn't necessarily hurt them because they're still paying off of that particular last request or whatever ad serving platform they're using. But when you start looking at the, how the publisher is being affected by that and ultimately they're procuring that inventory, bringing that to market, it's something that needs to get solved. But I think as the advertisers get a little bit more educated, no matter who's the middleman in that conversation or technology and services provider in that conversation, all, everything's going to get a lot more efficient because the procurement companies at the advertiser side are getting involved in this too. They want to understand how digital can be a lot more efficient. See, I, I think this whole notion of consolidation is it's almost kind of like a wet dream for people in the industry in corporate development who don't want to have to... And bankers, <laughs> I might add. I mean, yeah. the, 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 the notion that all of a sudden um, the rampant speed of technology uh, development is going to slow down, I just think it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, uh, Terry Kawajas should actually spin off Lumascapes and actually create a proper business out of that because that, that, that thing is just going to, you know, all of a sudden... Next year, we're not suddenly going to see a lot of white space on that display landscape. We're going to see lots and lots of new companies coming in. So there's not going to be consolidation there. There's going to continue to be. I mean, it's so easy on a relative basis, I think, to get traction with a company these days compared to where it was before. The challenge is it's very, it's very difficult in this business to be a large technology company. I think to be a technology company of around $100 million of um, you know, real technology revenue that's not associated with media, that's incredibly difficult. There's very few companies at that scale. You know, we're trying to be one of those companies. Google, et cetera, is trying to be one of those companies. So I, 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 when I come into, the, into work every morning, I would love there to be consolidation because it would mean that on every one of these 11 fronts I'm fighting, I wouldn't have to think about 20 companies that are nibbling at our heels. But I just don't think it happens. I think it's less, I think it's less about, you know, it's not just you know, product M&A or product diversification M&A and checking off the box in Terry's chart. It's more about talent acquisition. I mean, if you look at most of the acquisitions, whether Google's making them or Facebook's making them, these, whether these products are still utilized moving forward or not, it's, like, it's a starting point with a great team that under, understands the sector. That they bring in-house and start scaling out wherever this platform takes us and whatever you know, new technology and capabilities that need to be added to, again, the buy side or the sell side, because it's going to change and continue to change no matter what. But you need that team, you need that expertise, and you better get it at scale as quickly as possible. We view it similarly as well.